Hi everyone, welcome to a one of two videos to explain a unit that we're going to be focusing on the idea of scale and sculpture. So because the videos are going to cover two very different things, I thought I'd divide them up into two videos. So you can find both of these videos or should have already found them in Schoology uh, in a hyperdoc. So let's talk a little bit about the assignment. Basically, it runs like this. You're going to create a sculpture out of probably a new material for you. It's called paper clay. So it's a combination of big surprise paper and not clay, but paper and glue and actually joint compound or wall board, which you actually use to patch holes in your walls at home um, to use as a sculptural material. We want you to understand the idea of how to work with sculpture, texture, how to understand scale, and also work with the idea of um, form, making something three-dimensional. So I'm gonna move myself, my image of myself here, just a second. And I'm gonna tell you that everything I just mentioned to you is listed on this first screen. You wanna make sure you read the next few slides very carefully because they have the vocabulary and there's a scale worksheet, which we'll talk about in a second that's linked here and a couple other places in this hyperdoc. So you can see here there's videos coming soon. One of the videos is the video I'm filming right now, and it's going to be dropped in here, as well as a video on how to work with the paper clay. So your job is to show me you understand about scale and form. You need to know the definitions of both of those. You need to obviously already know about value. We've talked a lot about it the last couple units, but you should know about the idea of value, or you would might call shading, and how to achieve that to create blended value. And new introduction this time is about texture. So there are two types of texture. There's actual, meaning that when you touch it, it actually feels like the thing you're intended to be touched. Or there's implied, where you pretend to make something so that it looks that way. So if you've ever drawn something to look furry or feathery or prickly, you've drawn it in such a way. But we know in our mind that if we really touch the surface of that paper, it still feels smooth like a piece of paper. So there's actual or real, and there's artificial or implied. There's also uh, concepts of called additive and subtractive sculpture. So probably no surprise, additives when you add something, you add more clay to something, or you add more material, if you were to add more wire, that's additive sculpture. If you think about a giant piece of marble and a chisel and a hammer, and you were an artisan and you carved away or removed something, that's subtractive. So they're two very different types of sculpture methods. You're gonna use both in this particular unit. An armature is a big fancy schmancy artsy fartsy word and all it means is a skeleton structure underneath basically that's holding the sculpture together so if you were to make something more than clay even some sophisticated clay assignments you're going to be using an armature in our case we're going to be using aluminum foil we're going to form something to create an armature or a skeletal system of your sculpture and then you're going to build it on top of that so it looks like it's all been made out of paper clay but in actuality it's got a little bit of aluminum foil in it too so you're going to be building an eye of an animal you're going to do some research online and find five different photos of the animal of your choice that those photo references are going to help you to draw them in scale uh, which we'll get to in a second and then you're also then going to build it as a sculpture so these on the fit on the uh, screen are meant to look more like human eyes but you're going to see that in our sculpture you're going to be building an animal's eye so i mentioned to you a second ago that you are going to need to first complete the eye on scale worksheet. So I'm gonna click and open it here. And you're gonna see that you're gonna be asked to shrink to scale something. In other words, make it smaller. So you'll see the drawing of the man and it's seven and a half head lengths long. And your job is to then shrink it to make it also seven and a half head lengths, but it's about half the size of the one that you can see that's on the right hand side. Then at the bottom, you're gonna be asked to enlarge something to scale because if you haven't learned already or you didn't remember, scale is the idea of comparing two or more sizes of something. So if I bought a big SUV and before that I had a little tiny compact car, you know that if you put them side by side, obviously that one is larger because you compare the two sizes against each other. You do the same thing in art all the time. You compare two or more sizes. One thing is sort of the measuring stick for the other thing. So in both these cases, I'm asking you either to shrink or to enlarge to scale so that it, everything remains and looks the same. It's just a smaller version. That's gonna take you about two or three days to complete. You wanna make sure that when you get to the eye drawing, that's at the bottom, that it's done in full blended value. That's important. 
you've already learned how to do that, full blended value, and make sure all the texture is there. So in other words, you can see the hair on the eyelashes or any imperfections on the skin should show up. Then you're gonna be asked on the back of that same sheet to do a little research and development. Go on to Google, go on to the internet, find five different photos of the exact same animal's eyes. We want you to see all of the research you found looking up the animal of your choice. You get to choose the animal, but we're gonna be drawing and creating and sculpting the eye and sort of the surrounding area around the eye. So if it has fur or feathers or scale, all of that's gonna be important. Then you're going to be asked to make a final drawing of the eye the way that you think it's going to look. So you're going to see a giant rectangle, as well as an example of a human eye done by a student a couple years ago. Again, you'll notice that there's shading and value on there. There's a little bit of texture to kind of suggest those wrinkles in the forehead. Your drawing should feel three-dimensional. So through its shading and value and the scale to making sure that it's drawn so that it is slightly smaller, then the photo you probably found online, you want to draw that drawing of that eye. Okay, so that's basically it for this part of the unit. I'm going to come back in another video and show you about working with the paper clay and give you some more insight.